Thank you very much for introducing me to Hiwi here. And uh, first of all, you know, thank you very much for the people, you know, especially the Robert, who, you know, able me to show up to here. Maybe the many people of you guys you know, never know about that, you know, what's NTT? Maybe, maybe you know? You know, NTT stands for Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Corporation. Then, if you're interested by that, then could you check it out at www.ntt.co.jp? Then, just for your information, we Japanese people called our country, not Japan, but Nippon in Japanese language. That's the reason why we call it Nippon. So, you know, NTT is just like a British telecom, AT&T, right? You know, country-based, you know, the telecom provider used to. But, you know, because we acquired X burial network you know, about you know, 15 years ago, then maybe the, you know the some of you guys know the Landy Bush. Maybe he used to work for us, but the, now he's working for the another ISP in Japan. But then uh, AS number 2914, maybe the email, you know, for you somebody as a tier one provider. Then we are learning about that. Then today, my colleague Robert Lassak, you know, used to work for Cisco or Juniper or Cisco. You know, I never know about that. You know, but then uh, <laughs> in a uh, several years in a. Uh, Two years ago? Three years ago? Yeah. You know, he came to me at the ITF meeting, and you, he is interested by some position at the, our laboratory in Silicon Valley. So the Roberto is now working for us, and we are the colleagues for now. And then this time, you know, he suggested to me to come to here to talk about something. Now, I myself is also the working for the IT technologies over the 18 years, and uh, some, you know, I'm working for the RFC documents. And so if you Google my name, you can easily find my presentation at RFC and internet draft in a fat labor. Then also the some wider project, you know, also that is in the basement of the Kame project and then IP version six and implementation and then, yeah. So let me start. So, you know, today I'd like to discuss or you know, talk about that in a, some transition and the transformation about an internet operation Especially today, so-called hyper giants like you know, Akamai and Google and other people are changing the model of the internet and the traffic patterns. And then there is several, not many, but discussion, even legal framework for the piracy has been changed so that you know, how traffic chains is you know, you know, a very big question. Also the have you ever heard about a uh, transparent cache technology, which can enable us to cache even YouTube contents without noticing the Google itself? So that's really, really controversial technology. So I'd like to make a quick report on these kind of topics first. Okay, then I'd like to use my country as an example because you know that is the most easiest for us, right? Then, to, you know the. Today, Japanese, you know, yeah, Japanese people are so crazy. If you come to Japan, you can easily get over 100 megabps fiber to the home to each, in any case, at five, 50 US dollars per month. We are providing you know, over two, 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 200 megabps, over the one gigabps you know, transport for each household, right? Then at very cheap price. So, you know, many people using the high quality bandwidth of YouTube video and other things. So, you know, that's the reason why total download traffic bandwidth of user in Japan is you know, today already exceeds 1.7 terabps. And then um, upward traffic, yeah, that sounds really, really some illegal maybe, but then also increasing that. Also, the we can observe mobile traffic, you know, very, rapidly increasing. You know, and uh, mobile traffic doubled between 2010 to 2011, and then continued to show upward trend. So, you know, I think that today, we've already have the, around the 200 gigabps from the, uh, the mobile traffic. Yeah, because of the still, uh, the fiber to the home is exceeds than mobile is, as I said that, Japanese environment is the quite the fiber optics oriented. So each household can 100 megabps, so that you know, that still can exceed the wide LTE and the 3G networks, but still, eventually, probably the mobile traffic, you know, exceeds on the terrestrial 
like you know, to tell, you know, maybe within a few years, I believe. Then, talking about the you know, model of the internet, yeah, lots of people knowing about that, you know, so-called tier one ISPs covering up the, all over the world, and then they give a transit in you know, a service to the you know, tier two or maybe the nationwide tier one service. And then traffic trends is becoming from the HTTP video, music, or P2P, but whatever. You know, the traffic itself is coming to tier one ISP and go to somewhere and vice versa, right? But recently, hypergiant started to peer with the IXS and also the tier two networks directory. That means that you know, they are bypassing the tier one network. So, you know, and also the lots of cache technology is implementing to the edge of the network, like in a Google cache or Akamai cache. Maybe the, some of you guys who runs ISP maybe already have Google cache or maybe the Akamai cache in your network. So that the traffic is directly you know, transporting from the edge network to the end users. That can reduce the entire cost of the operation. Yeah, that's good things. Then, Many people may already about know about that. And you know, these five years, you know, back in 2007, all the top 10 backbone traffic in North America is occupied by the so-called backbone provider, what tier ones. But you know, 2009, Google became a top number three backbone, you know, uh, the operator. They are not you know, uh, operating the transit yet. But then a Google backbone itself is already you know, have a third place. And uh, sixth place is a Comcast, the big, biggest in a, uh, the cable TV operator in North America, also became the top six. But in the uh, year 2010, Comcast has already dropped into the top, you know, number 10. But then uh, the other you know, contents delivery network is becoming the top seven and top eight. You know, Google now becoming top two providers. That is quite a quick change, and there was a very dramatic change of the game of the model of the internet. I really think in European region, you may, be, you may see this kind of changing already, maybe they're coming soon. You know, of course, you know, we observe these kind of things in Asian Pacific regions already. So, you know, just let you know about that. Then, you know, Actually, this view is in a making made by the Ministry of the Internal Affairs and the Communications in, of the Japanese government, but they are not reaching to the Google or Akamai. So, you know, the traffic itself is in a just excluded Google backbone network, for example. So, you know, we have to think about that, you know, not just only for the traditional ISP's traffic, but in addition to this, we have to add you know, the hypergiants and the traffic on top of this. Then, I, yeah, I can skip these kind of things. You know, and also the recently we do need to think about you know, some legal framework on transparent cash, okay? Because the, some ISP already afraid of the hypergiants activities. I will mention about that, what the issues on top of it. But then, then in Japan, Japanese government legal system has been modified you know, on the copyright law, you know, effectively on the 2010. That enables Japanese ISPs to deploy transparent cash system to improve information telecommunication network. So the most important fact is we do not need to get approval from contents provider to contents cash in Japanese region. So that's really, I'm talking about quite an uh, aggressive topics, right? So, you know, we, even if you can put the you know, transparent cash with a noticing to the people. Yeah, when I talked this in the last year at the Cisco headquarters, I mean, then Igor from the Yahoo architecture you know, said to me that, What's happening on that? Yeah, don't worry about that. And I will just you know, let the people to hit your advertisement. Only the, you know, <laughs> the high quality video is coming from our transparent cast. So don't worry about that. Then Igor will say that. In that case, that's fine. You know, 
I don't want to hurt, you know, their hypergiants in a business model, but then I'd like to save network. But a anyway, and also the, in addition to that, in Japanese legal framework against the piracy has been changed right now. And uh, before that, you know, no punishment on top uh, for the downloading of the e piracy contents. But uh, be careful about that. If you travel to Tokyo, please do not download piracy contents. That co may cause the something. Yeah, of course, there is no nothing yet. But then, uh, at least in a, in a law says that. Then, okay, then we conducted some research. What's happening on that? This, you know, this kind of things in the Japanese networks. Then, this is a summary. We have some research group who implemented lots of some machines on, you know, for the various ISPs in Japan. Yeah, Japan is a small island, but it's still a huge population. Then, for some reason, we have hundreds of ISPs still. You know, lots of small and the big and ISPs is running. Then, according to our survey, Google Global Cache servers already implemented you know, about you know, one third of the ISPs, including you know, our biggest you know, competitor, KDDI, and also the SoftBank, in you know, implementing the you know, Google Global Cache system. We OCN is our trademark for the open computer network from NTT. Still, is not using Google Cache. And then talking about Akamai Cache, yeah, we've also using the you know, Akamai Cache in our network, and also the uh, again over the, around the forty percentage of the entire Japanese ISPs in using an Akamai Cache. I believe that the situation could be same here in forum or maybe the European countries. Many of ISPs has been deployed hypergiants in a cash machine into your network. But the, we already have some issues around this kind of technology. Frankly speaking, some ISP, not our, not, not us, you know, I cannot disclose that guy you know, coming to me last year. Actually, CTO of that ISP came to me. And uh, Dr. Shin, I have uh, some question about that, you know, because you know, they are, you know, they are thinking about to install Google Cash or something like that. Then their question is: Is Google paying for any fee for such Google Global Cash installation that usage it? Actually, if you have contract with Google, I believe that they have no payment for the their hosting Google Cash because you know, they say that. That improves your performance. You can save the transit fee, so that and that's a win win. So that and could you give, and I I'd like to give you this cash machine into your network. So please connect it to you for free. Okay. If that Google Cash just act as the cash about you know, free contents like a you know, YouTube video or maybe there's something like that, that's fine something. But there's, you know. Talking about the legal uh, rules between Google and ISP, even they could use paid contents for them. So, because you know, we cannot dig in, you know, we cannot reveal any Google transparent ca Google cache by ourselves. So, you know, that guy just afraid of it. Once they introduce Google cache, maybe the Google use that cache for any purpose without any fee. And also that he afraid of that. If anything happened on the legal framework on the traffic, especially the YouTube video sometimes has uh, some controversial content. Some country doesn't like that, right? In that case, who must defend that in a kind of things? Google or maybe the ISP who installed that? Nobody knows. I have no, no answer for that. You know, I'm not in an attack for the Google people. You know, basically the Google is a very good friend of us. So that we'd like to know and discuss and decide if we install hypergiants in a cache like that. So, you know, some people in, IS, you know, in the ISP world already are afraid about that. So, you know, that's the reason why I'm just you know, raising a question to you guys. If you have any answers, I'd like to have your opinion on top of you know of this topic as well. Then, 
talking about transparent content cache, there is a, some technology called the transparent content cache. You can purchase some machines from the various vendors. Then that is a very simple you know, techniques. We can put that transparent content cache into the, our network, access network. So that you know, once you know, end users would like to see some heavy traffic generated contents to be you know, downloaded. And you know, the, hyper, uh, the transparent cache just send the TCP reset towards the con original contents provider to stop the tra transmission. And instead of the original server, contents cache will send, copy and uh, to cache the contents to the end users. Then end use, from end user's point of view, nothing changed. Faster speed, and then nothing different. Then, yeah, again, there is a lot of issues on top of it. Probably some countries, probably that must be illegal, violating the copyright law, maybe. In Japan, clearly, we, we find, you know, we, our government already decided that could be happen. So that's up to the country to country or region to region. I do not want to say you should do that, but then uh, you can check it out, your legal framework, so that you can do this or not by yourself, okay? Then, of course, you know, there is pros, and also at the same time cons, you know, that makes you know, more you know, point to be failure. And uh, of course, you know, contents, you know, any equipment can produce any failure. So you know, we already observed that, lots of cons on top of that. Yeah. Then, but the most serious question is you know, how content cache effective? Then we have already you know, tested into the our some region. You know, I we asked to the some regional ISP to try that, not us, but then who purchased our transit? Then according to that survey, we can get about you know, twenty six point one percentage of the improvement when we install the Google and uh, contents cache. So, you know, as far as I know, nobody reports that kind of the, you know, number. You know, that makes effect, you know, how you can save your transit fee, okay? You know, contents, pro you know, because the contents changing day by day, that's the reason why that not goes to the 100 percentage. That's going to be around you know, one, one and a quarter percentage of the entire traffic you can save. So, you know, that reflects, of course, uh, transit, maybe not transit. So, you know, because of that, the areas where transit provider offering that very cheap service per bandwidth, contents cash have no reason to install. Maybe you think about that transit fees in a costly, you think, you may think this could be reasonable to install. So, please check it out. That, that that is a result from our research. And uh, talking about uh, uh, cacheable contents, yeah, cacheable is maybe the, our, not the true English, but uh, you can understand that, right? It's around uh, 80 of the your traffics. Anyway, then this is uh, from the Japanese in a point of view, but in uh, a top in, uh, contents is uh, youtube.com. And the second place, Nikopedia, is a very Japanese-oriented and a very similar to the YouTube. You know, they are producing lots of uploading that some video and the conference. Then, funny things is that so far, Yahoo streaming cannot cache. There is some tricks, but the other than that, we can we can cache it. So you know, the reason why we cannot cache it is the even for the Google, sometimes they change. The URL. You know, we can observe, for example, in a URL of the Google cached in a content YouTube. You know, someday they put it some range parameter. We never seen before that. So once small modification could be happened on the URL, of course, cache system erases original cached contents. So we have to re get in our original contents only with even small modification, right? So, you know, that's the reason why contents provider changing the URL, maybe the weekly, even daily, to cancel 
this kind of transparent cash we can observe. Of course, that costs a lot. We never seen which is good, but you know, that is just observation we observed. Then, that's the reason why we have to do intensive research about you know, what's a good URL risk as a white risk. Otherwise, you know, the, your contents cache machine is getting useless, you know, the information which cannot be used. So you know, if you land in you know, a transparent cache, you have to watch the, this kind of changing in real time manner mostly. Otherwise, you know, that your cache is never works well. And also the talking about IP version six, because a path seventy discovery mandated in IP version six, transparent cache sometimes breaks that. We know some implementation that's good, but you know, of, of course at the same time we know some implementation cannot do this. So talking about IP version six migration, you have to very keenly check it out, which is that machine is compatible or not. That's what we have learned from our research. And also that we have to do think about an asymmetric routing. You know, some ISP even us do asymmetric routing for lots of reasons. In that case, transparent cache cannot work because of the requirement comes this interface, but then returning traffic is coming from another interface. That means no you know, chance to work the transparent cache. So if you would like to land the transparent cache, you have to do very careful about an asymmetric, asymmetric routing stuff as well. Then, now we MTT communications are testing and evaluating various contents cache technologies. You know, we purchase that and I ask them to borrow us, they try that and I put that into the, our, you know, the evaluation network. We launch the own dedicated evaluation network in separate from the commercial network, then not implemented yet to the commercial because still we cannot see that's good good for us or not yet. But the some our transit customer has been already deployed the transparent cache. So that could be choice. Maybe not. That's up to you. But then I'd like to let you know about that status about these kind of things. So still I have an, another topic but the yeah then just in case in a you know once in a uh, the download of the piracy contents could be the custody, you know, but the Japanese people are so brave, only 10% is dropped off. Then that's already now resumed, you know, going up towards. So, you know, okay. So, you know, uh, then again, uh, to conclude this part, you know, Center, we do need to study about hypergiants activities. Maybe that you may be uh, coming from hypergiants, not, you know, you know, you have to be observed. Then there are certain pros and also cons. And the legal situation on the internet has been changing year by year, place to place. You have to be very keen about that if you learn that kind of service. Especially today, your service is not limited to your regions. Sometimes you have to service to the, uh, the people next to you, or maybe the far, far from you, right? So you know you have to be you know careful about that, and then new technology is coming up. Then yeah, still our research is on going on. So if you have any question, comments, you know on, on, on top of it, please ask Robert or me to make email or you know coming to me or coming to Robert to ask about that. We we are certainly happy to talk about that. Okay, can I change to the another topic? All right. Okay, then I'd like to give you another topic in this session, talking about an, our system called the Samurai, that is a traffic analyzer and anti-distributed denial service system. In a, the, maybe you know about the terms of the Samurai. Is the, I don't know, in Europe, you know, the people who has a sword and a swear and then a protected uh, princess, that's the Samurai type of people. Then in Japan, yeah, looks like, a, uh, the Star Wars, you know, Darth Vader. <laughs> I heard about that Darth Vader is uh, inspired by the samurai itself. So that's the reason why they use the sword and also the look samurai. Yeah, that's uh, actually our ancestors in you know, doing these kind of things. Oh, man, we use that in a name for our code name. Then this topic is in a 
you know, the, I like to talk about that you now. Things about you know, watching an IP network. Okay. We have to do that, right? Because we are the operator. We have to do watch our network in real time manner. That goes well, that goes bad. Maybe there any you know, accident or not. Can we satisfy the customer well or not? Everything is coming from watching an IP network, right? But then how to do it? Then where we should have the sensors and uh, what tool are you using? And uh, even if we could get enough information, how to analyze that? How to utilize the result of the analyzation? And uh, how to react to that and analyze this? You know? So these are the series of the questions we have to en encounter day by day. Hey, Mark, good to see you. Then, for example, if we do have cyber attack in the network, can we modify the network configuration on the fly? But that may cause the another accident because our operator is not so well educated. Maybe the they make the mistake about on the internet in the IP address could be cause the another accident, right? So these are the series of questions we have. Then go back to the and uh, before that, I'd like to talk about that and system. I'd like to introduce our network. You know, our network is uh, consists of basically the two ASs. One is AS2914. That is covering up the all over the world. You know, that X barrier network, 2914 is one of the tier one networks, you know, then coming from the Asian to the US and the barrier and the various places. And the AS4713 is the biggest ISP in Japan domestic terrestrial network who has 8 million subscribers for the for more, almost the fiber to the home. Then, this is the point of presence. Uh, in Japan, there are two big cities called Tokyo and Osaka, about uh, 500 kilometers away from. One is, of course, the principal city I came from, Tokyo. Osaka is the second biggest city. Then, between two of those, we do have that, you know, back up and a backbone, around uh, 10 one tera bps or maybe the over the 500 gigabps to the one tera that the kind of things is our nationwide backbone just for internet you know again just as said and simon you know tell, tells this is only for isp section we have another dedicated lines another voice of circuit this is just for isp backbone then talking about the global ip backbone you know if you interest by that please check it out this url but then we do have the 600 gigabps between US and Japan, Trans-Pacific, and the 482 gigabps between in other Asian countries and in Australia and other Oceania countries. Even we do have direct connection from Europe to Japan. You know, we have some contract with uh, you know, Russian operators who has own fiber optics along with the Siberian railroad. We are connecting the some fiber optics from Japan Islands to the you know, far east, you know, you know, the network of the Lucian operators. We connected fiber and uh, that come to the directory to the Europe. So we do have very good RTT. We do not need to travel United States to come to United, you know, to Europe. We just can send and let's see packet almost direct for the Europe and the Asia. And then, yeah. And even, but we do have also transatlantic line, you know, as well. So, as Simon said that you know, today's si uh, standard speed of interface is 10 gig, but we have just started internet connection at 100 gig BPS last month. So you know, if you like to ask us to provide some internet connection, we can serve you to at 100 giga BPS interface to you. So we have just started. Then, 40G is now emerging, but then 100G is rising. But then we ask to the, almost every vendors like in a Cisco who works in a, in a, in a yeah, in a, everyone. In a, but then a, we, I don't know how many years ago, but then a we have a meet with the, 
in uh, people in the Cisco headquarters, some guy talking about 100 gbps interface deployment, then who needs that? They, that guy said that. And, uh, and at that time, you know, people coming from Google and me are the only people who raise hand. We, we, we need that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 network architecture geek meeting. And yeah, then, uh, yeah, yeah, we need that. Then we already have that. So please be careful about that. If you are the coming from the vendors, please bring us at 100 GPS with them. We are asking you to create that. Then, in such a circumstances, full packet inspection never happens. You know, it's simply difficult or impossible to do that. Right? Even we could do that, the how large storage you know, the disk space is needed. So look. So in that case, we can use only sampling method, like you know, only one out of 10,000 packets can be monitored. Right? In, in, for that, we can utilize technology called flow. You know, the implementation is NetFlow, CFlow, or SFlow, or IPFX. You know, you can see lots of switches and routers which enable you to send flow information to the servers. Then, for example, you know, if we identify the one out of 10,000 packets, you know, yeah, that's still good to capture the trend of the, you know, traffic in the middle of the such kind of super high speed backbone, like an over the one tera or something like that. You know, just for your information, you know, there is a flow collector servers, you know, then and you can program the each interface to send flow information to the flow collector. Then flow collector can handle such information from various switches or from interfaces. Then in that case, flow collector can watch, for example, one out of 10,000 again. That means if that link is 100 gigabps, any activities over the 10 megabps can be captured for sure. Okay, less than 10 megabps in the 100 gigabps interface, ah, we can ignore that. Even that is a you know, cyber attack, right? So we can do that, traffic reporting, you know, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and annual fluctuation. You know, that's really nice for you because if you do have the such kind of information by year by year, you have a good evidence to convince your bosses to upgrade your network because our network is rising this kind of status, then we have to add another equipment or maybe circuit by this. So I strongly recommend to you to do this. You know, you should turn on the flow today. If you don't have today, then you have to have the such kind of uh, information accumulation. Must be very nice for you. And also that we can sometimes uh, observe the failure because uh, one interface shows some in, in uh, flows, but then uh, the other peer interface never receive that kind of things. In that case, in the middle of the two point interface, somewhere malfunctioned. So, you know, you can create that kind of system easily. Then, of course, we can create cyber attack alert system. Then, we implemented summary system for this purpose. Then, we can set some of the standard or uh, normal activities. Then, any traffic exceeds some you know, conditions. You know, the system warned us something is you know, different from the daily life. But be very careful about that. Sometimes our customer may start some Olympic game streaming this day. In such kind of cases, that can be captured as a cyber attack because volume is suddenly popping up, right? So you know, if automatic response system can be created, you have to be very careful about that. Maybe the customer starts, maybe the huge event someday. So you have to ask customer, may you can stop or not, right? Employer to do that. So that kind of things is very important to think about that. Then talking about the DDoS trend, yeah, we observe the huge network attacks. You know, even sometimes you know, we can observe uh, in over the 10 gigabps distributed denial of service easily. 
frankly speaking, you know, we observe this kind, these kind of things at least one or two twice a year you know, over the 10 gigabps, maybe the exceeds for the 40 gigabps attacks. So you know, can you imagine that you know, if you, you know, in aiming at you know, DDoS around the 10 gig? So we think about that you know, the technology and you know, a scheme called defense in depth. It could be very good to, you know, to do that. So because I have not so many minutes, so I'd like to you know, uh, hurry that. But you know, then I'd like to use this animation. OK. Once an attacker sends to you know, some massive packet to you, your system, if the fire, you know, if any people think about this firewall, is very good at security protection, but an interface in front of the firewall could be, you know, the occupied by the attack packet. In that case, firewall is just a useless machine, right? Because the, again, links in front of the firewall can be captured by the attackers. So we think about that. Our network must have some function, like, you know, okay, some good customer use that you know, the server through the firewall. If attack happens that, maybe the customer's firewall defends it, but still, the link is occupied. Then, they may ask us to filter at the provider edge, but then maybe the, the, that attacker may use the source address forged. Okay, the reality is the we should stop that an ingress interface on the network far end from the customer. So in that case, we should defense the customer here. So that's the reason why we operators should have some system in the network to reduce the attack so that an you know, end customer can handle it. So that's a you know, concept of the samurai system. Then our network, AS2914, has this feature. Then also the just mitigation machines, technology is available. In that case, we can do more smarter version of that. If you do have the DOS mitigation system, system from our machine or some, somewhere, once attack started, we can put the very host-oriented IBGP routing scheme and uh, information into our BGP you know, traffic. That's redirect the attack traffic to the DOS mitigation system, filter out, and resend that packet to the end users. Then returning a packet is coming from the end users to the good server. In this way, we can do better protection to the end users as well. Then, in that case, you know, once DOS attack happens, that the flow information is coming to the Samurai system. Samurai system, you know, de detect the DDoS, and then we send email to the end users and uh, server machines. We use the the other circuit like in a you know cell phone. In an email which contains some URL. In that case, you know, then you may have the mitigate, you, know, you may have the DOS. Then, in that case, you know, the, the operators can just click the button. Okay, you may do that. And then our summary system, in, you know, uh, the inject some route information and also the filtering information automatically to the networks so that you know, the DDoS attack can be filtered out. So, this is actual interface we created. And uh, you can see some switches. This is a customer in you know, operator's view. The right side of the in, in a button, we can have the ACF, I mean the DOS mitigation button. So that you know, if once an you know, operator, you know, administrator receives some email, he or she needs to only click it to modify our network information. So that's very easy. So no human you know, related. Of course, we can do this automatically, but again, Maybe this could be the Olympic game streaming. Or maybe the, you know, some, sometimes Sony started some, Nintendo started some events. So, you know, our system maybe identify this kind of sudden huge traffic volume can be DDoS. So, you know, just for your protection, we do this. Then we have this kind of things as well. 
because I have no time to discuss more and more, we, do, we can do that for the IP version 6 as well. So, now we're working on this system, then that's already commercialized. If you're interested by that, please ask our sales you know, representative, or maybe me and uh, maybe Robert, we are happy to do, you know, offer that. Anyway, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for hearing me.